What's up you guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we have something super special that I want to announce and that's that our bike berry parts just came in. Um, we had the billet cylinder head, the F2 thruster, the stage one CDI and the copper head gasket. All these parts we're basically gonna be doing a mini series on. So for today, I'm gonna be installing the high compression head. But in next video, we're gonna be installing the F2 thruster, see how that thing performs. And we're actually gonna do real riding footage of each product. So we'll take the bike for a before and after ride and see if we see an improvement in speed or compression or cooling, etc. So before we test out the cylinder head, there's a few things I wanted to point out. And for the F2 thruster, first impressions, very good looking pipe. Um, I think this is gonna look great on the Yamaha and it currently has a flex fit pipe on it. It performs okay, but I believe this is a better pipe for that bike simply because it's less restrictive. It doesn't have a built-in silencer on it. It is straight through. There's no baffling. There's no internal stingers, nothing like that. Um, so I'm really excited to see how that performs. And I also like the sound as well. So as far as the cylinder head goes itself, there's quite a few things about it actually that do make it better than let's say a stock cast head over there. And the first thing is that you're gonna notice the deck height on it a lot lower than your standard head. That's gonna increase your compression from let's say 100 PSI to 120, it really depends on what you're running. The dome profile is a lot smaller. So once again, that higher compression boost better burn. Um, also it's a Hemi style head instead of a uh, angle fire. So it's gonna um, burn the fuel a lot better. The uh, sonar head itself um, has a really nice cooling ability. And that's because of these tall high riser fins that allow air to pass through and really cool off your motor. And a lot of the stock cast heads will have problems with a spark plug will leak. Well, that's not an issue on the cylinder head because it's machined perfectly flat. So a lot of people think that when you upgrade your CDI or coil, etc., that you're doing it for better spark and power. But what I'm doing it for is reliability. You see the stock CDI boxes and the magnetos and things like that, they tend to go bad. You know, if you let your bike set for a winter, you'll go to fire it up in the spring and it doesn't want to start. This is off a of PW80 pretty much. It's designed after that. So it's going to be a lot more reliable. So I recommend this one over a stock one. However, we're still going to test it out. I'm going to test the spark. We're going to go for a ride, see if it feels any smoother. And also the ignition curve is a little bit different. So we'll see how that goes. So the copper head gasket. I wanted to try one of these out for a long time. You see your stock kit comes like a little aluminum gasket and it performs okay but these copper ones actually seal a lot better because they're a softer metal. So I will be installing this with the billet cylinder head. But that's enough talking for you guys, let's put it on the bike. All right guys, so the first thing that I wanna go ahead and do is check the stock compression. Um, this cylinder has not been decked down. Um, there's no trickery here. It's got a stock bone stock cylinder head on it with an NGK plug. Um, I'm shooting for around 100 PSI because like I said, it has brand new rings in it, but we'll have to see and then we'll install our billet one and see what we do. Plug looks good. So when screwing these high compression gauges, you're gonna have to hold the compression gauge up above the cylinder head and just spin it like this. It's a lot easier that way. Alrighty guys, got the gauge hooked up on the motor. Um, you may notice it's not threaded in all the way. I couldn't do that because it was hitting the top of the piston. So it's not gonna be as high as it probably should be, but it should be around a hundred. So let's see what we get. See if I can do this while holding the camera. It's actually kind of a challenge. All right, here we go. And right about at a hundred. All right, guys, just got back from the little ride. Let's see where the temperatures are. I'm going to give it a little rev. Red's pretty good. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's quick. Yeah, about 250. A little lean, for sure. Alrighty guys, so the first step to installing your new sonar head is to remove your old spark plug. I like to do this while it's still on the bike, it's a lot easier this way. 
You're just gonna get your socket on there, crack it loose, just like that. You're gonna remove the plug. I'm running a NGK B6HS in this thing, and seems to be working pretty good. There's the burn on the plug, looks okay. Now we're gonna get a 13 millimeter socket. Most of you guys will have 14, but this engine's a little bit different. Um, I got aftermarket cylinder head nuts on there. Got them from the hardware store. Just gonna crack these open. It shouldn't be too tight. You don't wanna over tighten your uh, cylinder head. I get a lot of um, questions about, oh, my base gasket leaking or my head gasket's leaking. You can, o you can over tighten it and that will do the same thing. It's gonna squish out the gasket material and not give you a good seal. You want 12 foot pounds on these guys. Um, that's the recommended torque spec for these things. So go by that guideline, you won't have any issues. Also make sure all your gasket surfaces are prepped before you install a gasket. Um, wipe it down with alcohol or I've used Windex before also. It's got like ammonia in it and it actually works pretty well. So let's see if we can get these off. And I powder coated this as well. I powder coated it to match the side covers. They got that nice um, kind of glitter inside the powder coat. I liked it, but you can't go wrong with CNZ head. They look so good. Um, this motor performs really good. Has boost port in it. New carbon fiber reeds. I was thinking about putting the stage one ignition on it, but I was originally going to put that on the felt faker build. Not too sure what I want to do there yet. Um, this one has a lot less room in the frame, so to show you guys how to install it would be kind of trickier, so I'll probably end up doing it in the F-Zero. Okay, so we got those four nuts off. When pulling a cylinder head off, you want to go slow. You don't want to get metal shavings in your motor. Just be very careful, and also let your motor fully cool down before you change your cylinder head. Definitely recommend that. But what you're going to do is you're just gonna rock the head back and forth, and I'll show you what to do in a second. You don't wanna completely take it off. Here's what I do. I get a little stick magnet, right? One like this. Pick up all those lock washers because you don't want those falling into the motor. They're easy to get out, but you don't want it happening in the first place because it's just annoying. So, let's see if we can get those washers off. Just like that. And once we get all these washers off, then we can just put our new head gasket on and we'll be good to go. Notice how the dome profile on the cylinder head is a lot larger than our CNC head. This will give you less compression. Doing a little comparison here, you can just see the difference, man. If you flip these two over, like just look at the difference in the cooling fins. Tell me which one would cool better. No wonder this motor is running at 230, 40, 50 degrees because these are just not going to do it. Once you start modifying these engines, they create more heat. And like I said, where I have a boost port in that motor, you know, G2 reads and everything, it's revving pretty high, you know, when I kick it down and give it throttle. So this is just going to be such a nice upgrade. I'm expecting a lot lower temperatures with this head. But we also noticed that like I said earlier, the dome profiles, like you can see side by side how different they really are. When installing one of these gaskets, the crucial thing is to work it on. Actually, what I recommend doing, see these four studs here? Take two nuts and loosen them off. What you want to do is tighten the two together and then back off the stud a few turns. This will allow the stud to be more pliable and then you can tighten them right back up after. That's what I've done here. You can see I'm just going to push the stud, and like I said, it has a little bit of play in it now. And you just, lit, thread by thread, we're going to install this head gasket. And if you bend this, ma'am, it'll seal, but not very well. And once you start getting the higher RPMs, it may blow out. So, just like that. See how it dropped on super easily? That's what we want. Okay, on goes the head. Let's see, I got it here. I had to loosen off my exhaust. I'm hoping that I can push it out of the way and install it, but... See how it goes. Almost on. There. There we go. Cylinder head looks pretty good. Um, I may have to 
see how this works out. I might have to add a gasket just to space it out a little bit more. And uh, we'll see if we can work around the exhaust a little bit, but it looks pretty good. One thing you notice about these cylinder heads is how hard it is to get these uh, lock washers on. Something I found is if you take a screwdriver and put it at the end of the stud and let it drop, it'll actually go right on. So that's a little tip for you. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I don't think these are stainless steel, so they're not magnetic. Well, there goes that. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Yeah, I like to put it in the socket and just put it right on quick. That's what gets it on easy. <laughs> That's going. Try it again. That's the thing, you gotta go so quickly that you get easily messed up. So, that's something to keep in mind when putting the stoner head on. If you don't have a magnet, it might prove to be difficult. Alright, so now we're just gonna go ahead and tighten it up with a socket. In a cross pattern. Now this is optional, you don't need a torque wrench, but I have one so I'm going to use it. It has little increments on the gauge there, and you'll see when it flexes over, but we're going to tighten these to 12 foot pounds. So let's get the torque wrench on there. Good. 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 And good. Okay, so we got our four cylinder head nuts installed. Now we're gonna take our NGK plug, thread it back into the motor. And this cylinder head looks really good, man. Just brighten up this bike. It looks awesome. Get the old spark plug socket, put it on there, get your ratchet. And there's no torque spec for this. Well, I think there is, but I always just tighten them like this. Just basically get it tight and go that extra little bit. There's our spark plug installed. Final thing to do is get your CDI boot. And like I said, we might be upgrading this. We'll see. And stick it on there. And like I said, in most cases, your exhaust, you won't have to loosen. I'll tighten that back up and then we'll go for a ride. All right, let's see what we got. Oh my God, wow. That's a lot cooler. That's Fahrenheit. And I went for the same ride. Holy smokes, this thing feels a lot better. video. Stay tuned for part two when we install the exhaust. See you guys in the next video.